Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 21 series with the Colorado Rockies and usually a kind of gloss over um, the roster decisions and shaving uh, the roster down to the final now 27 since there are 27 guys on the active roster after the rules just bumped up uh, this past offseason but this is definitely an interesting um, or definitely going to be an interesting portion um, this season. That's because of the injuries we suffered um, during spring training. So Almonte, of course, we knew he was going to be done um, for probably most of the year. And his ratings have already gone down a bunch. But uh, the accuracy is also kind of low. So, you know, maybe as we scout him, you know, more um, so throughout the season with his injury and stuff, um, you know, maybe he'll be better. Um, don't really know. But Durbin Feltman here. Um, you know, a guy who we were counting on to be um, pretty decent in our bullpen this year was not the best the past two years, but um, you know, we were counting on him to be you know part of that middle part of the bullpen. Well, he tore his labrum. He's done for an entire year. Um, he's he's out for this season. Probably be out for some of next season. He's done. On um, Taylor Trammell, he suffered a quadriceps strain, which at the time um, was a day-to-day -day injury for about a month. Um, so I immediately put him on the IL. Um, it only influences his running. Um, and I was like, you know, probably be fine. Um, that went to an unknown injury. And uh, so we basically just don't know when he's going to come back. Um, you know, which is probably fine because we have some outfield depth. And uh, Marquez also got hurt. Thankfully, it wasn't a long-term injury. So he'll, I mean, he's ready to come back right now. And we will do that. Um... But yeah, so we have we just have some interesting kind of decisions to make with uh, shaving down this roster. So basically, I mean, Contreras, I'm kind of getting into the first thing. Uh, he needs to go down. Levine, back down for him. K, down. Uh, hitting is definitely going to be much easier to put guys down for. Welker, K, no option years left. And Doyle, probably no option years left. Oh, he does. Perfect. Um, yeah, so we'll be carrying 13 hitters and 14 arms um, this year. But it'll really be a 14, I guess, because um, Mueller is kind of a two-way player. Um, basically, I mean, he's just a pitcher who can hit pretty well, and we use sometimes to pinch hit if we really need to. That's basically how he's uh, ends up being used in this, I believe. So Vavra, Vavra he's an option. Um, options used. Um, so Vav Vavra, Vavra, whatever. How many years does he have left? Uh, actually, zero. I'm pretty sure I put him on this year just because, um, whoops, didn't mean to click on Mitchell there. Because he was, uh, possibly to be taken to the Rule 5 draft, and yep, so he's got options left, so he'll go down. And we need one more guy down, which is either going to be Hampson or Welker. Now, this really shouldn't matter. Wow, Crawford's ratings actually went down a decent bit here. Um, yeah, definitely no guarantee Crawford finishes out the season. Um, Vavra, the guy we just called down, uh, sent down, he definitely could replace Crawford in this role. Um, Crawford, he's going to be the veteran guy we use for now. The thing is, do I send down Hampson and keep Welker? Because... The kind of Rojas going down, like, Crawford is not the best, like, offensive player. And, I mean, Crawford can only really play shortstop. Definitely be interested in having Welker at second base. Like, Hampson, we, we know what he is. Like, he's, he's just a utility guy who can't really hit. Who had, like, the best season of his career last year. And he was just, like, above replacement level, basically. And when in us sending him down, he's never gotten claimed so far. So I think, honestly, we're just going to go ahead and send him down. Um, yeah, no options left. So we're just going to have to go ahead and DFA him. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And that gets us down to the um, guys that we need there. So then we only have a few here. And we need to be mindful that, of course, we're going to need another spot. Because we need to get Marquez here. As well, so basically anybody with an arm, I mean anyone with an option, 
um, is going to be sent down here. Rollison hasn't had any of his options to use so far. Um, yeah, well, I think Paredes is the first candidate. I mean, he's probably the safest person to go down. Ooh, wow, Gudo's ratings really went up. Uh, as a reliever, at least. I think Doyle probably is. So why is his... I was about to say, why, I thought his national popularity was high for some reason. So Doyle probably is the next guy down. So we, we really need two more people to be sent down here. Um, yeah, I, I really don't want to send down Noah Song. Oh, Ivy. He's pretty obvious. Okay, never mind. He doesn't have any options left. Well, I guess we're just going to DFA him and hope because I definitely value a lot of the other guys higher than him. So we sent him down, and that's how it is. Like, uh, the how many guys we should have in the roster. Oh, Rawls and I really don't want to send down. Uh, yeah, so I think Ashby has to be the guy we send. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that wasn't too difficult. So, yeah, this is who we're going to go with. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about this. And then we'll call it Marquez. Then we'll sim a day and see how all of this shakes out. I assume Giolito should be on the mound for us in opening day. And he was. And he gave us a good seven innings, but we lost two to three. Uh, yeah, so a close loss. And then so we're going to look at now how it shakes it out. I was trying this entire spring training to play Josh Lowe in left field. Since, um, yeah, I mean, he could like split time with Mitchell in a platoon or something. And you know, we could give... Infante more center field at bats this way, but I forgot that I hired Alex Cora as a manager, and he's a total like controlling personality in this game, so we couldn't even like put him in and left and at least try it. So um, he didn't get any experience at the position, so he technically can't play left field, even though he'd be a plus defender in left field. So I mean that's whatever, I guess. So um, this is kind of how it shakes out now after. Um, we start the active roster. So basically, Hilliard and Lowe are the uh, corner outfield backups. Uh, I mean, yeah, basically that, that was to be expected. And Fonte, he's going to be um, getting a decent amount of action as the defensive replacement center field. And also um, platooning against lefties. So he is there. Um, Hilliard is actually getting uh, every 15th game uh, against right-handed pitching. Um, in left field, so that's fine with that, giving him some regular at-bats that way, and then pretty much everything else is pretty much how you'd expect, I mean, we don't really have many platoon pieces on this team, all the starters are pretty locked in, we got Walker backing up third base, Nicholson backing up second base, so I'm going to assume he's going to get some run at second base then, like if Soto needs a day off, he would, um, uh, that Nicholson would play second, Crawford subs in at short. And then honestly, probably Soto could, I mean, I prefer Soto to get some run at shortstop over Crawford even. So I kind of wish, uh, yeah, I wish I didn't have, a, like, Core as a controlling personality, so I could, like, maybe play Soto over Crawford at short, Crawford play second, something like that, but d can't do that. Um, but I guess the rest of this is fine. I'm surprised Gallo isn't listed as a backup uh, at first base. But that's fine. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I want Catches playing every day there anyway. So. Yeah, so all well, that's fine. Now, pitching wise. Um, okay, gave Muller the fifth spot while wow, Rollison's third over Marquez. Yeah, that's why I was not down. Julito and McGavin, they're always going to be the one two for us. And then uh, Bowden retaining his role as a left, uh, the lefty specialist guy. Gonzalez is a closer. Chapman um, is the first middle reliever out of the bullpen. Fernandez and Knable, of course, um, being the setup guys. And then, I mean, having <laughs> guys like Godot, um, Noah Song being the 
like the middle relief guys and then I mean Conine and Montes being long relievers our team is pretty pretty stacked here definitely I mean our pitching at least is our bullpen I should say is pretty stacked of course uh, the last three guys in the rotation aren't the best but you know hopefully going into the season I mean know uh, hopefully one of the back three guys emerge as um you know being pretty decent or at least have a pretty good season and there's a good chance that one of these guys will at least have a you know season um you know and that's maybe a little above the ratings and then we could go out and acquire um you know maybe a big time starter at the deadline and use that to kind of parlay our way into the playoffs. I really do think that we have a solid team here. And hopefully, uh, you know, if if our hitters don't get... If we're able to keep our bats healthy, should have no problem being uh, a playoff contender, I would think. So definitely exciting. Excited this season. This is definitely the best team we fielded so far. So hopefully we can... Uh, turn it into a playoff run that would definitely be pretty sweet because of kind of like the weirdness of how I've kind of broken up this episode with how I'm um, starting a new season I kind of covered the um, kind of uh, setting of the like full active roster for um, the start of this season I decided that now would probably be a good time to maybe take a little stock of the entire organization as a whole because I figured it you know wouldn't really be cohesive to skip all the way to um kind of the uh, first year player draft as I usually do um so yeah I thought it'd be a good idea to take kind of stock of uh where the organization is now and look at kind of the some of the prospects we have coming up here so so looking here at the um top systems list um surprisingly we're pretty low we're 29th and according to this we don't have anyone on the top 100 prospects list which is kind of confusing to me honestly because we definitely have some guys that are pretty highly rated or uh i mean highly rated by our scout and um by even um osa i believe like uh i mean we don't have any guys that are rated probably like 70 grade but i'm shocked that we don't have even anyone like down here like even in the lower end and uh i mean we do have some pretty good guys in the system that we've um been calling up i'm actually gonna go ahead and look at it this way um by top prospect report here so we can see um the ranking of the prospects um as they are in our system or at least how um, i believes um these guys are ranked in our system i'm um, so number um, one right here is definitely the best guy, like, Kobe Mayo. I don't understand, like, how this guy isn't in the, um, top rankings, and, uh, some of these guys are actually much more major league ready than, uh, I expected them to be, so, Kobe Mayo, he is, uh, our ninth pick in our very first draft of this series, actually, so, uh, uh, from 2020, and he expects to be playing in the majors already, which is, uh, kind of weird, I didn't, uh, expect him to do that already, but he is already 22, and, um, he's kind of progressed a little slowly here. We had him. Um, uh, this was kind of before I was uh, managing uh, the minor league system uh, as closely as I have been now. Um, so basically, he repeated rookie ball, which uh, definitely was not ideal. Um, because he even like he hit very well. Um, in his first in rookie ball, you know, right after he got drafted, then the computer just didn't move him up for some reason. And he's one of the reasons why I started um, making sure that um, guys who I feel how like can be. I'm contending into something. Um, that's why I started following these guys and making sure they progress properly through the system. Because then, you know, like in 2022, he took pretty much the next step. Uh, he went to low A short season. Um, so didn't still didn't play full season, but uh, got promoted to A ball. And then this was really his first full season of, like, full season ball. I mean, uh, which is weird because you know, he's 22 and he already wants to play in the majors. Um, his overall is pretty high already. I mean, it's almost 50. So, I mean, if we need a corner guy, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Kobe Mayo would be who we call up. And I'm actually kind of interested here in not really knowing what I'm going to do. Because if you look at his ratings like right away, his ratings are pretty similar to Dalbeck. And, you know, he's, he's a pretty decent-ish 
um, defensive third baseman, his range isn't as good as Dahlbeck. I think Dahlbeck's is like 50 or something. But, I mean, he has a good arm, um, you know, doesn't make many mistakes here. Um, but the thing I do like about him is home run power might not be, um, you know, his potential is 65. I believe Dahlbeck's at 70. But his discipline potential is way higher than Dahlbeck. So, I feel like if we get Mayo up in the bigs, I mean, he could be even better than Dahlbeck. So, you know, he could you know, be maybe someone we move um, as good as, you know, he's been so far in this series. You know, it might not be the greatest idea to extend him when we have a guy like Kobe Mayo waiting in the wings, or, you know, Mayo, we could uh, put him up as some trade bait. Um, next guy, we have Ian Muller. Um, he's basically just starting out. I was, yeah, his uh, first full season coming up here. We literally just drafted him. He was our, the 11th pick in the draft. Um, pretty decent defensive catcher here. Um, could be a two-way player behind the plate there. Um, another guy who is pretty major league ready is Michael Brown. He's straight up just a first baseman. Um, can't really um, play the field that well. Actually, he's a, not the worst defensive outfielder. So uh, he could maybe get some corner time. Uh, he's kind of literally in the same boat as Mayo. He even repeated a um, rookie ball another, and he was just disgusting. So, yeah, another one of the reasons here why I decided to start um, paying close attention to the development of prospects here. Um, this year in A ball, he crushed. Um, not they didn't hit uh, nearly as well when he got called up to uh, high A, but um, Mayo, both Mayo and Brown will both be in Double A this year. And again, like Brown, I mean those ratings are he's a huge, huge, huge power bat who can get on base. Um, contact not as big there. Uh, more of a Joey Gallo ish type hitter, as in uh, more strikeouts. Um, probably hit for less average. Um, less overall gap power, uh, mainly, you know, home run, uh, walker, strikeout guy, three true outcomes guy, pretty much right here. I'm um, trying to think here of um, other guys who are um, kind of progressed more through the system. Uh, ba here, the guy we just brought up, he's um, slotted in here as what our fifth best hitter prospect here. Um, we have a guy who, again, is on a pretty low, um, low in the mileage right here, uh, Stivers, um, Stivers, Stivers, whatever. Um, good rangy um, infielder right there uh, who could um, be also a useful bat with his on-base potential. Levine, he's been kind of in the top prospect list for us for the entire time uh, we've been playing the sim. Um, I mean, he's a pretty good player. We just don't have a spot for him. Um, he honestly could be some trade bait with uh, the guys we have coming up in the system. We just really don't have room for him. Um, so, you know, he definitely could be a trade candidate for looking to improve the team this year. And then here we have kind of some of the uh, catching depth that we have in the organization here. Uh, Matt Gouchette, um, pretty decent defensive catcher here. So-so. Um, Hitting-wise, again, another guy who is one reasons why I started to more closely follow my league development. And you can see he's already 22. I'm not rated the highest. I'm only 35. But um, still has a good potential going forward. Paredes, he's the guy we just brought in. Uh, and then basically here we have some lower level guys here. Um, like Tovar, I mean, he only has 45 potential. This Garcia guy, I believe we picked him up uh, yeah, in the Chicago trade. Um, decent um, bat up the middle there. I'm not sure why Brenton Doyle is there and why he's so high. Uh, Moya, he's a bat first catcher that we have in the system. Nate Stevens, of course. Um, he was one of our um, original draftees in 2020. Pretty decent um, defensive catcher, or I should say okay defensive catcher. Bat didn't really pan out um, exactly how I mean, would want it, but it still still probably would be a decent bat. Um, a lower level prospect here. And then uh, Amador, um, defense, uh, yeah, defense first um, guy up the middle, uh, shortstop. Not the best hitter. And then we really don't have many um, pitching prospects here. Ashby, who... Uh, we got in the Milwaukee trade. He pitched a little bit for us last year. It wasn't very good um, in the major leagues, but he was good um, in minor leagues. At least decent. And then here we have some of our more recent draft. These Jake Horsley, who's a most likely a shutdown reliever. Um, good start on him. Ground baller Ben Peterson. Um, a st actually, no, not a, not a starter. Um, his stand was a little low. But, uh, yeah, I mean, another good bullpen arm for the future there. Will Frisch. He is a guy who I'm hoping does develop into a starter for us. Nelvis Ochoa, a um, guy that uh, I just brought in because I saw he was available in free agency. He's kind of a young guy. 
And then some, I mean, guys down here who really, I mean, I don't think will turn into anything. So I'm not really too, too concerned about these guys. Um, this uh, Duenas guy could be a decent lefty of the bullpen eventually. But other than that, um, I don't really value um, any of these guys down here um, too, too highly. And then here, you can also quick see, just a few days later, that uh, Garrett Hampton and Tyler Ivey actually have been claimed. So it looks like they're going to be moving on. Um, to other teams. Uh, Garrett Hampson, uh, he was claimed by Washington, so he's going to be uh, with their organization now. Uh, I mean, Hampson wasn't even necessarily um, a fantastic player for us in this series, but um, I mean, still kind of sad to see him go for some reason. And then uh, Ivy also got claimed by a multitude of teams here, and uh, he eventually um, went to Cincinnati and it looks like Charlie Blackman here is retired which uh, of course he was with Colorado for most of his career you can kind of see here how um, he panned out here uh, after we moved him of course in uh, 2020 he started the season off with us and then we uh, decided to move him he was pretty good with us actually a uh, very good actually with us doing typical pretty typical uh, Charlie Blackman things offensively um, with us through the first uh, 69, 68 games of the season there. And then uh, when he moved on to Seattle, he immediately started to struggle um, with them. And then 2021 and 2022, he played pretty full season with Seattle there. We're going to assume he was um, basically a starter, probably suffered some kind of injury there, I would assume. Um, of course, he's not very good defensively. We'll check that after this, or at least see how he progressed defensively um, into the later years of his career here. Um, I mean, he still had some pretty good offensive seasons um, there those two years. Um, o OPS plus, WRC plus, uh, above 100. Um, had a bit better year in 2022. Had a much higher on base that year and slugging, actually. Um, so yeah, he was pretty good for them those two years offensively, at least. Next year, looks like he is more so used as a, a bench bat. I mean, he was fine. I um, mean, you know, not awesome at the play, but I mean, he didn't really see about regular appearances and then this season uh he got basically two starts with detroit um hit a homer and then basically decided that was enough and that he was uh gonna call it quits so uh charlie blackman here retiring we'll see here after he left us um just how he did of course um before the series um he was pretty much colorado's uh, everyday center fielder for a few years of course, not historically the greatest um, defensive outfielder. Um, he was actually okay with C uh, St. Louis here, it looks like, in right field. 2021-2022 um, wasn't, I mean, completely awful, but negative six zone rating. Probably about what I would expect for an older outfielder like him. And yeah, so it looks like he wasn't terrible um, defensively. Uh, looks like he also won a ring in that 2021 with the Cardinals, so... It's a little nice to see right there. Uh, you know, we moved on, uh, moved on from Charlie Blackman when we were kind of uh, changing out that old core with uh, a lot of the guys we've brought in now. You can see these outfield rings there. They really must have declined in the past year or two. I'd assume that yeah, that he when I was checking the fielding, he didn't um, have anything for Detroit, so I assume they're using him as a DH. And while it looks like yeah, he was actually the uh, NL um, CS MVP for the. Uh, Cardinals one day I won the World Series that year so pretty cool to see that uh, Charlie Blackman you know we moved him and uh, he went out and uh, got himself a ring the very next year which is uh, pretty cool to see uh, hopefully we can uh, get a ring of our own pretty soon all right and after simming a few days here Taylor Trammell he's finally going to be able to um, come off of that injury but we are going to send him on a rehab assignment just because um, he was down for uh, a decent amount of time even though it was a minor injury so hopefully he can come back from that it looks like Soto's also a little banged up here but he'll be fine in a few days so we'll let him play it out all right so after a few days in the rehab uh, assignment here Tremel only got two games in it looks like but I mean he was good in those few ABs that he got and uh I mean he's he's been down for a little bit so we should be able to just have him up here um, so we're going to go ahead and call him up. Not quite sure who we're going to send down here. It looks like Mitchell's been performing well. 
Um, Gallo's really the only outfielder that hasn't been hitting. Um, let's see who has options left, to be honest. I think it's probably who we're going to go with here. Who's had the, um, who still has options left to be sent down. Mitchell can be sent down. Uh, looks like Hilliard actually has an option left. Um, I mean, it would really make sense to send down one of our lefty outfielders here. Looks like Hilliard's not very happy it's because he's not starting. Mitchell's also not very happy even though he's been starting literally the entire season so far. So I'm not quite sure what's up there. His defense has been okay so far. Of course, it's only a few games. How's Loeb been looking center field? He's been looking pretty decent, at least in this little sample. Yeah, to be honest, I think Hilliard's the guy we sent down just because he hasn't been getting many ABs. Even though he is the um, first guy off the bench, I mean, that'll change to Mitchell once we bring Tramel back up. So we'll just go, we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll sim another day. Marquez, he is down. Um, he basically just missed this next start, which uh, Montes um, or Conine should just take. So we're not going to put him on the IL because um, it's only a few day injuries. So we'll just take him out of the next start. And you can also see here we are off to an awful, awful, awful start. We're 2-12 and to start of the year. Um, I would say worst record in the league, but uh, Miami, um, who are now the stars, um, they only have one win. And uh, Six of Sanchez got that win, but they've been up to a terrible start this season as well. I mean, hopefully we can turn this around. I have no idea. Can we just see, like, a quick how we've been this bad? I mean, we haven't been scoring any runs. Um, and our pitching hasn't been the absolute worst. Our defense has been awful in these few games. Hopefully we can turn it around, though, because this is uh, going to be quite the disaster. But uh, we'll find out how much of a disaster um, the season is going to be or not um, when we um, check back in later in the season. So I'm going to go ahead and end this episode now before we get too, too far into things. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next episode.